Hi and welcome to this fourth video on Excel to JetCon transfer. I want to do a quick resume of what we've covered so far in the first three videos. So we covered entering the VBA environment within Excel. We covered creating and renaming your first module. We covered a little command called debug.print. We covered the immediate window and how to open the immediate window and have it show at the bottom of your screen. And that's where debug.print would print to. And we also covered creating a subroutine to hold your very important code. We introduced variables and how to dimension your variables. We covered absolute cell references like cells 2, 5. We covered collecting data from the sheet into the variable. We covered basic string manipulation like mid and left and there's also right string as well. They all have the same sort of functionality. We covered building a string using ampersand and combining your fixed data and your variable data to write that out to your JetCom file. We covered finding within a string using the str command. We covered making decisions through if-then decisions. We covered changing the string case using str convert. We covered the creation of a for next loop so that you can loop through your worksheet and row by row and collect the data as you go. We covered Roots Magic Place and Place Details format. We covered creating a custom event in your JetCon and we covered adding a note based on decisions. So those essential first and last lines, those are outside of any loop as we talked earlier. So zero head to begin the JetCon file and zero TRLR to end the JetCon file. So here's your most basic individual information. You know, the stuff that's shown here in the blue is like the JetCom language for want of a better word. And the stuff shown in the green is variable information. That's going to be coming off your worksheet and that's going to change row by row. Here we'll have a basic fact, and again the stuff in the blue is like the JetCom language. The stuff in the green is going to come off your worksheet. And this here actually includes Roots Magic Place details, which is the 280DR. And you can see I have a street address in there. It's probably easier to think of your JetCom file. And you know, when you look down through it, you see a whole lot of zeros, ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, and it's it's very confusing. But if you if you tab each one of them in and try and see it in blocks like that, it becomes a lot more evident the way it's working. Let's have a look at a real file. So here's a real file. I've stuck a few spaces into it just to help things. We can see the head here. We come down, we've got the individual, his basic information, name and sex. Then we've got an event. And when we go to the two row, um, we have the, uh, the date, the place, and here we have a source. And then we go to the three, and that's the actual page number for that source, which is actually just the street address in this here, because it's like a census source as far as I remember. Going down, there's the census fact, the date, the place, the source. Moving down again, just another fact. But you can see the way it tabs in each time. And after all the individuals and all of the individual information has been written, we can actually create that source. So down here we have 0, ampersand, S7, ampersand, S-O-U-R. And we actually build the source in here. And you can see this is very straightforward. It's not using a template or anything. And... Um, very basic source. Then we have one of the places here, so it's a zero under slash PLAC. And you can see that Roots Magic, I think, um, concatenates at 72 characters or thereabouts. But Roots Magic on a JEDCOM import, if you don't want to split the string up and do all this C O N C C O N C, it'll actually accept a line, I believe. Yeah, we'll accept a line of 255 characters. So if it's not too long a note, you can bump it all into one line. Another place down below, note within as well, but it also has um, geo coordinates. So you can see the map, the one space map here, and the latitude and the longitude. Then the end of the file, zero space TRLR. Just before I leave this, I want to cover the description field on facts. So I noticed one as we're going down here, which is the occupation. So this information here alongside the, the JEDCOM tag, this is actually the description field. If this was alongside the census here, it would go into the description field for the census. So you've got your description field here, you've got your date, then you have your place, then you have your place details, and those are the different fields. Now, remember in Roots Magic, unless you have your description fields enabled, that information is not going to show. So let's have a look at a real spreadsheet and something that's typical of being copied from the internet or other sources. Here we have a migration database and it's just been copied into Excel as it was received. You can see the format is a little bit skewed, it needs tidied up a little bit. And we can see the type of information that we have. First of all, let me tidy it up. 
So I've just tidied this up visually by a bit of formatting, but we need to look and see what sort of information we have. First of all, we have the surname, the first name, which is sometimes missing. We have the age, which is sometimes missing. Sometimes it has adult. We have the sex. Again, some of them are missing. We have the year of departure, the departure port, the destination country, and the destination port. Now we need to sit and think about what we can do with this data. So the first thing that sticks out to me here is destination port and destination country. They're going to be put together with a comma between them. We can see in this case here, St. John NB. We know that that's St. John, New Brunswick. Uh, so that's going to be St. John, New Brunswick, Canada. The departure port, most of these examples here that we can see, at least on this first page, are all England. If you're not familiar, a little bit of research, you'll soon find out where they are. In fact, as soon as I say England, I see Queenstown, which is Republic of Ireland. We have the year of departure here, so we can build an emigration fact, and this is going to be the year of the emigration. So we can also build an immigration fact. We have the destination country and the destination port, but what we'll do is we'll prefix that with ABT for about, because you can be leaving on the 30th of December 1901 and not arriving at your destination until 1902. So that's probably the most accurate way to record a date for that event. On the majority of our entries, we actually have an age. So where we have the age, we can do a bit of mathematics here. So we can tell in 1926 minus 20, this individual was born about 1906. And we can do that within the spreadsheet. Some of them just have adult. You could presume adult to be over 16, or you could presume adult to be over 18. So again, in the case of 1890, if you want to calculate an adult as being over 18, you could put the birth fact down as being before 1872, or you could just leave the birth date blank. So here's my list of what I want to do with this data and how I want it to appear in Roots Magic. Firstly, I'm going to change the surname to proper case. In other words, initialize the first character. Secondly, I'm going to create a birth event for every individual in the sheet. And I'm going to approximate that birth date as best I can from the information in front of me. I'm going to create an immigration fact with a place. I'm going to create an immigration fact with a place. I'm going to create a custom fact with the recorded age as it appears in the spreadsheet. And finally, I'm going to enter some simple source information so that I know in the future where this information came from. So here we are in our VBA environment. Now, I'm not going to labour over commands that we've previously explained. If you need extra explanation of those commands, I would suggest you Google Excel VBA and the command name. What I will explain in my own way is any commands that are new. So here we're using optional explicit. Here we're starting our subroutine. And here we're dimming our variables. You can see they're all fairly straightforward. Surname, forename, age, birth year, sex, departure year, departure port, the destination country, destination port, I row, which is the row counter, and T, which we will explain later. Here we open the JEDCOM file for writing. We print the all important first line of the JEDCOM file. And then we set up our for next loop using I row as the counter. This time we're going for 9, which is the first row of information, to 2936, which is the last row of information. Next, we're going to collect the information into our variables. You can see here the forename, age, sex, departure, year, port, country, and port. But before all that, we collected the surname, and then we converted the surname to VB proper case. Now, why don't we do that on the spreadsheet itself? Well, let me explain. First, let me bring my immediate window back into view. And what I'll do is I'll paste in here cells 9 comma 1, which is the first row of information and the uh, column, which is the surname. And we'll do str convert cells 9 comma 1 comma vb proper case and return. When I flick back to the spreadsheet, I can see that the first column has been converted to proper case. However, there's no undo function to what we have just done on the spreadsheet through the VBA code. So it's far better to do any manipulations to data within the variables, leave your spreadsheet data intact, and it goes without saying, always keep a backup. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to try and calculate a rough birth date. Even a rough birth date is better than no birth date, in my opinion. So we always have the year of departure. In a lot of cases, we have the actual age in numeric format. Sometimes we just have adult, which could be anything over 16 or over 18, depending on your point of view. Flicking back into our VBA, we have four conditions here. These are all covered by the if command. 
Now, something I probably should have mentioned before, but if you're building code and you're new to it and you're coming back to it, it may be difficult to remember where you left off or what you were trying to achieve. So throughout your code, you can comment it. And all these little comments that are appearing in green here, to build a comment, all you have to do is prefix it with an apostrophe. And you can see here, if you want to comment several lines, you just prefix each line with an apostrophe. It shows up in green on your code. It might be, I can't get this line to work and I've tried X, Y, and Z, and I need to come back to it and get it resolved before we move on. It's a handy way to move. If you're giving it to somebody else, it's not just a handy way to comment what's actually happening line by line. Now, if I was having trouble with this particular block and couldn't get it to work, all I have to do is prefix each line with an apostrophe. It still appears there in green, but it doesn't run anymore in the code. Then I can work away at it at some future date. So let's very quickly look at our decisions. So if the age column is blank, then the most accurate statement I can make is that the birth year was before the departure year. In this next block, if the value of the age is greater than or equal to 1, then I know it's a numeric. So I'm going to calculate the birth year as being equal to the value of the departure year minus the value of the age year. And I'll explain value in a minute. And then I'm going to build the birth year variable as being ABT space and the birth year. The next decision, if the age column equals adult, then I'm going to subtract 16 from the departure year. And that's the best sort of approximation of birth year I can make in that event. Finally, if none of the three above conditions has populated the birth year, then I'm going to estimate the birth year as being before the departure year. Now I said I would come back to val, so very quickly, val just basically means value. If the contents of the age column looked like a numeric to you, but somehow actually was text, Excel may return a spurious value there. So generally, when there's numbers involved, I use value. If you do debug.print and the value of what is in the surname field, you'll get a return of zero. So it's basically a sanity check to make sure the contents of the cell are actually numeric before we start performing some calculations. So I've collected all our variables and now we're going to start printing stuff out to our JEDCOM file. Now I'm not going to go through this line by line as we've done it all before. So firstly, we're printing out the individual information. We're going to print a birth fact, a date, a place, a source, and a page line. Same for the immigration fact, and next the immigration fact. And the only difference here is I've written a sort date as being after 1st of January and the departure year. And that's basically just to make sure that the immigration fact appears before the immigration fact on the Roots Magic Edit person screen. So depending on the contents of the age field, I'm going to write out my custom event here, which is called recorded age. In the case where the age column is not blank and the value of the age is greater than zero, in other words, it holds a valid number of years, I'm going to print out the JEDCOM tag 1 space EVEN space. Then I'm going to follow that by the variable age. And then I'm going to follow that by inverted commas space years. In other words, that could be 23 years or whatever's in the spreadsheet. If the age column is blank, I'm going to write out the JEDCOM tag and append that with age not recorded. In any other case, I'm going to print out the one space EVEN, and I'm just going to print whatever is in the age column. And that information from the age column of your spreadsheet, that's actually going into the description field of this custom event. This is fairly standard for a custom event, and I covered this in the slides at the start of this video. So the type for this custom event is recorded age. That's how it's going to appear in Roots Magic once we import it in. Lastly, we do next IRO to repeat our loop, move on to the next row in the spreadsheet, and write out the next individual. So here we are in Roots Magic, 2,928 individuals, 11,712 events, 113 places, and one source. Anytime you import a JEDCOM file, go to the same directory as your database, and you'll find a file with the suffix .lst, and it's gonna have the same name as your JEDCOM file. So here I'm looking at mine, JEDCOM import log, the file was immigration.jed, and there are no issues. If you have issues there, you've lost data and something that you need to deal with within your JEDCOM file. So here we can see a typical record. The birth has been approximated as about 1915. The recorded age in 1920 on the spreadsheet was five years old. So that's actually correct. We can see that's correct. He emigrated from Liverpool and he emigrated into Quebec, Canada about 1920. Let's have a quick look at the source that we wrote out. Here's the source in the source manager with the footnote, the short footnote, and the bibliography. You can set that to whatever you want from within your VBA code. And here's our citation. It's not very informative. It's more or less the same as the source name, information from migration database. And I can improve on that a lot more. So I'm going to show you how to do that. 
Back in our VBA code, we're repeating this source citation for every individual fact, and there's a much more efficient way of doing that. So I've replaced all those double lines with this colon write source citation. Now this is actually what you call a call, it's calling another subroutine. And each time Excel comes across this, it's going to jump out of where it is now. It's going to perform that subroutine and come back to where it is. So here is our extended source citation routine. Here's the reference number. Here's the new page that we're going to write out, which is going to be surname and forename and immigration record and square brackets, departure year, square brackets. Here's the citation comments field. Here's the citation research note field. And here's a web tag. Just put in Roots Magic Forum page, the URL, and in the note field for the web tag, this is the web tag notes field. Here we have a JPEG file being attached to the source citation. Here we have the caption for that image file. And here we have just a little bit of text that's in the, the media description field. So that's us about done here. However, the way I've written this, I can tell you that it's not going to run without an error. Compiler or variable not defined. Click OK, and here we are. So in the right source citation, the first variable we come across is surname, and it's not finding it. The reason for that, if you go back to the top, within this subroutine, we have defined these variables. So they're actually part of a subroutine. So what to do here is take all these, Control X, you go back up to your option explicit and paste them in there. Run it again. And let's have a look in Roots Magic. So here I've imported the JetCom again. Let's have a look at some of the differences. So everything's the same here. The you know, age being five. It's all calculated correct. Let's have a look at the source, which is where we made the real differences. So now in the page we have Eagleston, Leonard, immigration record, square brackets, 1920, which is the year of the immigration. So we can see here where our cabinet 999 has appeared in a detailed reference. We've written some text into the research notes and we've written some text into the details comments. Let's have a look at the edit screen. So here's our detailed text, the cabinet 999, what we've just mentioned. Let's flick over to media and here's our little media item. And we can see over here where we've written out the caption for that media item. We've written a little bit in the description field and of course the file link. The last thing we need to look at is the web tag. And there's the web tag, Rich Magic Forum page, and there's the URL. If we edit that, we can see in the note field, we have, this is the web tags note field. If I wasn't 100% happy with this, and I wanted maybe a hyphen in between the forename and the emigration record, jump back into my code, stick it in there, and it's going to appear in all the citations. Well, I still haven't got as far as family links, but I will do that in the next video. I think the exercise over three here should be very useful to anyone who's interested in getting to grips with this. And once you do get to grips with it, you'll run code up like this here in maybe an hour at most. And entering over 2,000 individuals into Roots Magic or any other genealogy program is going to take a lot more than an hour. Anyway, thanks for watching. Happy coding. If you would like to receive email notifications of follow-on videos becoming available, please feel free to subscribe using the subscribe button on YouTube. Vote the video up or down using the thumbs up or thumbs down icons or leave your comments for myself or others possibly to answer and help you.